Well, this is a very interesting text, but before we get into any of that, I have a quiz for us. I hope you studied. You did? Good. I'm going to start with some easy ones. This is a, a logo test. Okay, we'll start with some easy ones. Maybe some easy ones. What? No cheating. No cheating. What is this? Instagram. What is this? Okay, the older people in the crowd, you know what that is? You know what that is? It's kind of hard to see that far away, I know, but what is it? Kurt knows what it is. Tell him, Kurt. Title down. It's title down, Brewery. <laughs> so what is this one? Lexus. Lexus, very good. <coughs> now this one? How many of us have to have the latest devices or the latest things in order to make sure that we're keeping up with everybody else that's going on out there? Are you, are you like that? It's, and it's okay to admit it. 
I'm so, you know, some people aren't connecting right now, but it's okay. We're, we'll get to you in a minute. It's just hold on. It'll all come together. Trust me. Trust me. Right? There's so many things that we do in our lives because people tell us we have to do them and we have to have the right things and we have to live this right way. We have to drive the right cars. We have to have the right items. We have to do everything the way that it's supposed to be done. Otherwise, we're not in the in crowd. Otherwise, we're not part of what's happening in the world and we're on the outside of community. Right? This lesson this morning is a weird lesson to preach because is it about us or is it about Jesus? And if it's truly about Jesus, why did Jesus have to be baptized? Because Jesus was sinless, right? This, this means yes. This means that I am. Right? If Jesus was sinless and baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, why did Jesus have to be baptized? So he could be like one of us. But he did that in his birth. Right? Jesus coming to us and living amongst us as, as one of us made him to be one of us. Right? Don't jump too far forward here yet. We haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> She's connected the dots way of hidden events to be like one of us to, to, to say that again, to give us an example of what we were supposed to do, which some scholars would argue that he didn't actually do that because the baptism which with, with which he was baptized is not the baptism that he tells us to go and be baptized with, which our baptism is not the same as Jesus' baptism here because Jesus' baptism is John's baptism, which is a baptism of repentance and forgiveness. Kind of. And our baptism is a, is a, is a baptism of acceptance and forgiveness. Yes, our baptism gives us the forgiveness of sins and it washes away our our dirtiness and it washes away our sinfulness and it gives us that reminder every day when you wash your face, Martin Luther would say, remember when you wash your face, your baptism, because you were cleansed by God in those waters and you cleansing yourself is a reminder each and every day of that fact that you were baptized by God. And yes, it is kind of an example, but it's an acceptance and it's something that drives us forward. Here's the next question that leads us to the next step here is when did Jesus begin his ministry? What? When he was what? When he was young? Was it in the temple? Oh, we want a definitive answer. Most scholars would say that Jesus did not actually begin his ministry until Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. After he was in the wilderness with the Spirit, did he not go out and begin his ministry? If you read chapter 4, I think it says, like verse 17, it says something about it. And then he went about his, his ministry, his life. So Jesus needed to be baptized in order to be sent into the wilderness to be tested by God. Now, we could take that to mean that we need to be baptized in order to be sent into the wilderness to be tested and tempted by God, but we're not baptized to be sent into the wilderness. We're baptized to be named and claimed because that's what happened in Jesus' baptism and that's why Jesus had to be baptized. That's why this had to happen to fulfill all justice and righteousness and it had to be done now and in this way. Right? Because Jesus said that. Because John said, I should be baptized by you, but you come to be baptized by me. And Jesus says, let this be done now. For it is proper to be done in this way. And Jesus was baptized. And when he was baptized, the dove gently descended down upon him. Right? This, this means yes. This means no. Actually, I read something this past week about doves, and doves don't gently descend. What is a dove again? A white pigeon. Dirty, trashy birds. And when they want something, 
They don't just gently flutter down from the sky. Oh no. <laughs> they swoop in like a hawk. They descend like in, a, in an attack mode. Down upon their prey. And that should change the way we look at our baptisms. Because what happens in baptism is not us choosing to get wet. What happens in baptism is God choosing us. And what happened to Jesus on that day when He came up out of the waters and the heavens opened up and the Spirit descended upon Him, God spoke and said, This is My... Forget the, what's the word right before son? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And just like God said to Jesus, he said to each and every one of us at our baptism, this is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. You see, all of the brands and all of the things that we could surround ourselves with and all the names that we go by, Right? I am pastor. I am father. I am husband. I am son. I am brother. And while all of those define, describe me, sorry, not define me, all of those describe who I am, there's only one name that defines who I am. And that name is beloved child of God. Because when you were baptized into Christ, God claimed you as His only daughter, As His only Son. And He named you Beloved. And He sent you out into the world so that you could be a beacon and a light and to show everybody the only brand that ever matters is the brand that I am a child of God. Because the baptism of Jesus reminds us of our own baptism. Just as washing our face every day reminds us of that. It's about who we are. And who we are is whose we are. And that is God's. So this day, remember, the only brand that ever matters is the fact that you are branded by God, named and claimed by Him and brought into His family. For you are His beloved child. And He wants you to go and to tell everyone else that they too can be a part of the family.